Hello, in this video we're going to continue um, our adventure with uh, with Rust and continue creating our web server. So where were I? Okay. So we already created a simple request um, HTTP request parser in the last video. Um, okay, it's too hot. Okay. So yes. We have, let me close this, okay, and bring this in here, okay, so there is this Rust Lang conventions, I want this, okay, so, okay, so we already have, um, we already have a request parser in Rust, and we already got method URI version headers query params read here. Only the path params are not okay because we need radix trees for that. So in here, we should probably be able to create a request object from it. So let's do it. Request new to new, we should pass a reader which is socket dot read there read um, is it a TCP stream okay okay we just need to pass the socket itself uh, so um, we should probably take this as a reference mute mute it consider removing the borrow why move occurs because second has type which does not implement copy trade okay we, um i need this um let's see close this ah okay So we are having problem with Rust type system, as it is um, not really surprising. So we need a reference to this, or okay, you know what? We should probably change this a bit um, because the basically the owner of the socket should be the request itself basically the HTTP context or the client type we are going to have for our own web server um, so let's actually do that so we got our request this is okay let's have a struct client and this client has a request. No, let's not do that. Let's let's fix this. So this request gets a lifetime parameter now, and this is the same as this. We should implement this. Okay. Consider introducing a lifetime. I don't get it. Ah, oh, yes. Weird. Okay. Um, right. Where is the next error? We need a lifetime parameter. Um, can we do this? Remove this lifetime argument. We don't have this. Okay. 
I don't want this. We have three errors. Cannot borrow socket as mutable because it is borrowed as cannot borrow socket as mutable in here because it is also borrowed as immutable. But the lifetime must be valid for lifetime A as defined here. I know. Okay. Okay. Um, let's do something else. So let's change this into parse. Okay. And this is a TCP stream itself, and it is a sock. Do I need this? Um, you know what? Let's just do git restore. Let's just start again. I want to do something else. So I just change this name into socket. And. Let's change this name into client connection. Strike request. Can we do this? Okay. Each connection has a request, um, which is request, a response, which is another struct, response, response. Okay. Passing this would work. I also don't need this. And middle. And also, so this is implementing request. I also have impol line right here. Impole connection. Um, let me just put this in here. Um, creates a new connection. Passing a socket, which is Tokyo net TCP stream. This will return. So, what it will do, it will create a request. Doing request new socket. Expected. 
expected mutable reference. Should I do this? Yes, cool. We also have a response which for now is just response this empty response. And finally we do return a connection. Okay. <laughs> I have this bug in my configuration. So we have request response socket. And this should work. Request OPIC type? Is this an async? So this should be an async. Oh wait. Oh wait, this. Um, this is also a result of either a connection or an error. Okay. Hello, Barbara Socket as mutable is not declared as mutable. Okay, let's say this is mutable. Whew. Every time it wants to compile, basically, it makes you cry. Okay, but, but it's a better, it's better structure because now we know for sure that the owner of the socket is this connection type, which is cool. So, Let's do connection equals um, connection new passing socket. Okay. So with that, I already generated a request. So Also, hmm, that that's a good design, but I don't want to do that. So this is a connection, okay? So I do okay of unit. I also want to do print. So probably don't do this. Connection dot request dot method for example. this diagnostic so it says that I cannot format method because you don't you don't know so what I should do is do this so it's a debug okay let's just do the same again so basically it says I cannot I don't know how to print this okay so we have that I need this okay so this says I cannot convert to STDIO error because uh, so what's so what is the request is returning? Huh? Request is returning an error. Okay, so I also should return an error. Oh, but I'm, but I'm returning 
in here I should return an I result. So basically I should provide a way for this um, to yes to the SDDIR. So basically for this we, we maybe need to actually use this library I think because the error handling is becoming a um, pain. This will handle, this will basically create this drive macro we can use, but for now let's just add this. So I'm going to add an impul from, for, from uh, my error, for IO error. Um, I O error. Yes. Okay, so I just need to do this. So from error return self. STD no IO error. What is this? It's an struct. It has a representation. How I can create this? I don't know. Can we create just an empty one of this? Let me take a look at this handle function we have. Can we can't we have it in oh ew, we were just calling it ourselves. It's not needed even because <laughs> because we are calling it ourselves. This is why we can return our own error. I don't know what happened. Yes. And now, hopefully everything compiles. So, we got this. I also want to do... Um, um, for now, I don't want this response thing. And this. And I want a public async probably function respond so because we are going to use HTTP so we do mute not mute but um, self self is this the way to do it I don't know okay cool so I want my self and I want an status which is the u size and i also want a body which is a string not a string because i just want to read from the body and write to the response so it can be any kind of string and i will return to you an error So I can say self dot uh, save this and restart my ID and hope everything works. Um, self dot 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 self dot yes. Self dot request. So request is our request. Not request, sorry. Socket dot write write all. Attempts to write an entire buffer into this writer. Probably what I want. Try write. Returning how many bytes I can write. I want to write all. Probably. So I will pass the body. Okay. Um, actually, let's just 
Um, first of all, it's going to be a result of either this or an error. And I will return an OK for now. I also want to do so. So let's just see if we are parsing this correctly. So method is this. What else we have? What else we have? What else we have? We have URI version headers and uh, the URI and version and headers. Yes, this is compile time. This is nice because this is a macro. So it's basically telling me that I didn't pass the correct um, correct number of parameters to this format, um, to this print line macro. And this is nice actually. And there are tools that basically use this um, feature to create ORMs and to do some um, analysis on the query and this is really nice feature of Rust. Um, Zig also has this with comp time things so we can, you can base because comp time and macros are the same thing and comp time is a bit more um, how can I say it? easier to use um, bec but the maybe it's if maybe the just the problem with the comp time is that Sometimes you cannot find the barrier between what is compile time in, in a code. Of course, you can annotate it with a compile time block, and it will work. But sometimes you cannot find a barrier between where is the compile time where is, and where is the runtime code. <coughs> so we also need um, URI. We also need version and we also need headers what it says it says version does not implement okay so version which is an enum does not implement uh, derive debug which will prevent it from working. Okay, so let me see if everything is working. Yes. Oh, what is this in here? Okay. So um, let's do um, Rust Cargo Run. We're running. This is nice. This is the, one of the good features of Rust. If your code compiles, it will make, I think, 100% runs. There's basically no way it could crash, except for some I.O. related stuff. So we should be able to do curl localhost 8080. Uh, just do it. I think we have a infinite loop somewhere because it should return the result for me so we have this loop um, let's do this again let's just add the print line in loop loop cargo run and curl yes we have infinite loop so this loop never finishes why so <coughs> we are reading one byte add this to a buffer if our byte 
is a new line and if our first line is empty what we do we basically construct our first line which consists of three parts we will see later and we clear the buffer and we, we move on else if the buffer len is 2 and the buffer the 0 is uh, carriage return basically it says that um, if we are at the end of the headers because at the end of the headers we have an empty line with just a cache return and a new line feed so it will break otherwise it will continue but all will happen if we reach a new line but maybe we don't let's see what we are getting so let's put this in here and do this e as char can we do this hopefully run okay so we reached right you see we read oh this is actually a nice edge case because so you see let's actually take a look this is nice so we get okay why it's doing this okay so we get the first line is here get space something 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 we're reaching here so this is our buffer and actually what i want to do is print line uh, first line is first line okay so we got the first line this is cool You can actually see the bug, the one bug in here. This is not a part of the first line. This shouldn't be a part of the first line. So we should slice this from zero until buffer dot len buffer dot len minus two dot clone. No method name for clone a slice CU8. What if I don't do this? Then it will say I expected a vector and found in a slice. Um, how can I do this? <sighs> maybe. Maybe actually this is not what we want to do clone maybe this push should happen when I'm sure that um, you know what because I want to you know make the new line and carriage return an exception so I want to have an else if b as char equals a carriage return I want to do this no I cannot do this actually no I cannot do this this logic in here would fail if it's a new line okay let's just have this as it as is and then we will do uh, we'll make this better so we got the first line and can't we do any that slice or anything um, split slice can't we do this? 
Let's, um, I mean, it's really not nice that I cannot do this. Dot to owned to wick. Copy itself into a new. Ah, let's just do this. I don't want to copy it. I mean, it's not. Okay, I think to do this. But okay. So we are doing this. Okay, let's actually run this again. Uh, we got panic. We got panic on 79. This here. Because we attempt to subtract with an overflow. What does that mean? So we are trying to slice it. I don't get it. Maybe I should do well. Run this again. Run this again. Same error. Okay, so it's not a problem with this. So can I see the length of this? Buffer dot land. How is buffer is zero? You remember that line we deleted? <laughs> buffer dot push, I think B. Run this again. Run this again. And we should have our correct first line. Nice. We got this. Okay. So the first line is completely okay, which is nice, which is nice. Let's go. So we got uh, some headers already passed. So when we reach this state, so the problem with this algorithm is when we are, uh, when we read the first, the, so when we, okay, so if we are not first line, We reach a new line. So in here, theoretically, oh, we are not emptying the buffer in here. This is the problem. So, and the headers are messed up. So basically, we are extracting the whole content of the, of the buffer. After this, we should clear the buffer because in the next loop we are going to want this clean everything works method is get uri somehow is get version is http 1.1 and headers are these this is problematic except is probably the latest one yes so um, yes, because every time we every time we do this, we should do the same thing in here. Basically, instead of this, we should do this. So let's see if this works. Yes. Okay. Cool. So the only problem is the URI, and the URI is in here, in here, so what I do, let me remove this in loop thing. So the problem is that we do split the first line by space, okay.
มีโอเคโอเค so this is the problem uh, let method equals this this into is going to be method and method is just this now this should work yes So the problem was that I, okay, I'm creating an iterator, and iterators are stateful. We know that. So a, a HTTP request is something like get. So it's something like method space URI space version. This is the first line of H, any HTTP request. Then we have backslash R backslash N. Then we have some key value headers backslash R backslash N. Any amount of that. An empty line, and then we have the body. Basically, this is an HTTP request. So when we want, when we are doing the iter, we are, we are at here. Imagine we are before method. When we call next once, we read this value, and we are we are waiting here. So the URI before that URI was starting from here, and we fixed it. So basically, our request parser is actually now is working. So let's do status cool commit fix HTTP parser now works. So let's move on. Before that, let me just do one thing. Sorry. Let me just do one thing. This. This is annoying for me. Oh, I thought it would be how this is managed. I don't get it. So there is this window padding width and window margin width. So this should be two. Maybe this should be two as well. I don't know. I don't get this stuff. Reload. Okay, I really don't get it. I should investigate this later. So we we already have the request, which is nice. Everything is happening async. We know that because we are annotating, annotating everything with async. And I mean, <laughs> the thing with Rust is that we are annotating everywhere. That we are async. The exact same, um, exact same, uh, the exact op opposite of Zig, which we basically didn't say anywhere that we are async. async. Okay, so we got this, and you know what? Let's do uh, let's do HTTP. So let's um, mkdir source HTTP, and now do source. Um, HTTP mod is it mod.rs? I think there is this um, mod.rs host. Is that so? Um, yes, so. HTTP, so basically just like um, underscore underscore init underscore underscore py in Python. Okay, so we have this, and in main I'm going to use that mod HTTP. So I get this, and I will put everything. Basically, until here, into mod use HTTP. Let's go into mod, paste this. This is a public 
it's a public type the following trait implemented by the program so use okay it's a public struct this is a public enum I'm gonna use std hash hash map I think std collections collections Okay. Main. Okay, we have an error because it says field request of connection is uh -huh. not public, which is okay. Should we also call the kingdom? No method name read yet for mutable reference. How? Oh. Okay. So this is one problem with sometimes with Rust. TCP string. Okay, on that TCP stream, use Tokyo IO async read exit. Okay, so this is a problem with Rust. Sometimes um, another package or another um, basically namespace is implementing a trait for a type that is in, in another um, namespace. So for example, in here, we see that this namespace, Tokyo IO async read X, X is implementing a trait for Tokyo net TCP stream which we are using here I mean this has nothing to do with this at least in, in in terms of names but you see we get the error because it says I don't know I don't have this read UI this stuff in here so we should have it this is a problem I think or at least something that that is not nice cargo run and we have errors again for some weird reason we didn't check our main file and it says that our request still has private oh okay because um because connection i think it's oh yes these are these should be also public um i don't know maybe we actually can make these not let's make sure Yes, so we get this. So, um, also do another thing. So, what I do is move source HTTP mod into source HTTP request dot rs. So, e source HTTP mod dot rs, and I do mod request public this should be the same cargo run cannot infer type how 
Not found. Not found. What about now? Use request. Should be this public. Will this now work? Yes. So yes, it's also uh, almost the same as Python uh, init.py. Nothing special. We are. I'm basically exposing. So this mod.rs is a special file. So in each directory you create, you so for each so each Rust module. Let me say this uh, this way. So each Rust module either is a directory or a file and if it's a file so you can just import this module as is otherwise you should um, you should have a if either you have this as a file so if, so for example this HTTP we either have an HTTP.rs file or we have HTTP directory and a mod.rs file in it and we also basically introduce modules to Rust compiler using mod keyword and we use them. Can we do this? No, we cannot. I don't know why. I mean, it really seems okay to do this. I don't get it. Okay, we have everything, which is cool. This is working. And it's also more structured. So, more structure. So let's go into request. What, what's next to build? So we already have this request. You see that we are advancing um, more easily because Rust is a more mature language. And also, I'm going to say this async thing that Rust has is more familiar to use than Zig's async implementation. But that's really more beautiful. So so yes, we already have this. So actually, we have this connection thing. So let's just add this response respond functionality. Uh, we probably cannot completely implement this, but let's try our best. So wiki of hypertext transfer protocol. Um, each HTTP response more or less looks the same. Status line, first line, some headers, response headers, empty line, message body. Let's do it. So, what I want is um, so I can create a public struct called response which user should fill and it has basically simple three fields so it has its public status which is a u size also has body which is a pointer or a reference to string and it has a um, headers which is a hash map of string to string. Missing lifetime. Okay. So this string needs a lifetime. Uh, it's valid, but annoying <laughs> at the same time. So, oh, and there is also this okay thing. Um, which we should do. So what I will do is actually create a struct called status code, which is also public. So status code status is u size and message is 
a I'm gonna say static string basically saying reference um, so so rust has lifetimes and static is basically the um, a, a string that is known in whole program lifetime every, every other lifetime is just a child and basically a subset of this static and then I'm gonna say I implement the status code and for now I will just create a public function OK which returns self which returns a status code and this status is going to be 200 message is going to be OK oh yes OK cool um, so, and this is going to be status bar. So how can a user respond to us? Passing a response object. Simple. How can it says indicate? Oh, assuming. Oh, yes. So there is this lifetime. which we should define for this okay actually let me full the screen full screen this okay um, now what we should do is basically implement this so what will we what we will do is self dot socket Okay, self dot socket dot write. So we do it write all. Write. Here's the write all. Write all. So write all. There's probably a async write think in here so async write extension huh yes actually there was actually so now we implement this it gets the self also gets a buffer okay so what we should do format format returns a string we can then do dot to slice to as bytes mute bytes mute as bytes mute Okay. Returns a mutable. This operation is unsafe. Records. Really? How? This is an uns. Really? As bytes is unsafe. Weird, actually. Didn't like it. So we have this three part. Um, three or four? This three part. Yes. The first part is going to be um, version, so it's going to be self dot request dot version. It's going to be response dot status dot. Let's make this code. 
code dot status dot message so it's a string it says I need some bytes Can I do into? Oh my god. So let's search this. Rust convert string to slice of bytes. do as bytes so version does not implement this expected results okay okay the only problem is with the version and they say that version does not implement std fmt display and let's actually implement that this is good so implement std fmt display for version method fmt is not here so let's do let's go lsp good actions implement this okay cool rust analyzer is probably the best um, lsp server out there Okay, so we have this formatter, we should write on. So we say f dot f dot f dot write format. Hmm. Or write string. I should just use this and you know what I should do a match on version on self and do case there's no need for same case HTTP 1 1 do this that's the only way right What else? Mm, expected result of something found something. Okay, so I do this. It says I found uh, this struct. I should probably do a wait and do this. It says that I found in um, I expected this and I found this. So don't we have the error thing implemented? We can convert from um, it's weird because actually I can convert. Actually, I can convert from um, from SCDIO error. Maybe. Oh, well, actually, I'm using this as well. I don't know why I cannot do that. Mm, for now, we can do SCDIO error. Okay. Consider changing it to be a mutable reference. Okay. Without its helps, we couldn't build a Rust program, basically. So, uh, okay. So we have this respond. It shouldn't respond now because we didn't call it. Okay. We didn't call our respond function. But in the main file, 
in the handle after all of these we should do connection dot respond this is why that's gonna make us a problem um, respond with a response yes Status is OK. No, OK. Mm, it's in status go. OK. And there's this headers, which is hash map new. There's this body which is string new. Just an empty string. Cannot borrow connection is mutable. So it's mutable. And this should await. And this should could fail. Okay, run. Something happened. This is nice. So, in request, <laughs> basically, this is our whole HD module. I wanted to do a separate thing for response. Maybe I should put move this to another file, but let's not think about that for now actually I didn't check the font oh I hope everything was big enough uh, I should have all these cash return new line then I do so this um, then I do the same but I will say for key value in self dot request not request sorry response dot headers dot iter iterator we need it to I should do try wrapping these expressions this is not an expression I don't want this to return so self that's okay dot write all after this I want to do a you bad you think oh did I handle the optional space in the na in the headers I don't remember actually oh we are actually not parsing the headers <laughs> we are actually not parsing the headers as well uh, oh no we are we are sorry sorry we are doing it and in here the value should be a block and this is value if v the zeroth element is space we should say uh, we should basically return um, string from v1 until the end else we should just return v
okay I cannot index it so maybe I can do the string and then slice it how to type a string cannot be indexed the better answer why you cannot index in a string it's a really simple thing to do why this autocomplete is not working okay I'm tired of this let's open up VS Code ah, let's just open Sublime so let's go into HTTP request um, let's come down let's not come down completely didn't we save this? no seems no so I will say if k dot um, index zero equals space else is the size okay else um, k okay how many errors oh it says that this thing cannot be indexed chars dot n okay Let's say chars dot n. It will give me an optional. <sighs> what are you doing? Why every IDE is so weird? I would do um, k dot chars zero not zero one why is this so annoying all these pop-ups these are so annoying cannot index value of that chars why chars returns chars dot is there any way to do it as awake no dot as chars dot slice skip okay we can actually use skip <sighs> there is one delimiter that is not closing correctly and I don't even know which one oh this one okay if it does have incompatible types one is skip Okay, so what does the skip return? Skip returns a skip. So how we can use it? Skip. First n elements. Skip two. How does this work? dot next okay so basically let's let me say for last slice a 
So we do this. We should do string from k slice from zero. Okay, syntax error. Okay, this is normal. What is this app as bytes? Why we have, oh, okay. So for each key and value. Okay. Oh my God. What is this doing to me? Why everything is so weird? Okay, Nessus. Definitely not supplying text. Let's just use VS Code. See if that works for us. Where are you? Where is me? Okay. Request. Okay, it's better. Yes. So for key and value in this, I should. Oh, okay. Yeah, this. Okay. After you write headers, we should do self dot self dot socket dot write. Oh. And do the body, basically. Response dot body dot has bytes. Dot await. What are you saying? Expected result error found nothing. Uh, if I, but it's the saying operator has incompatible types, cannot convert from a unit type. This is not unit. Try wrapping this expression in OK. So you know what? Maybe you should do OK. Okay, cool. <sighs> and okay, this is sublime just ruined everything. This is even K now. How? I just don't know. It was K. I th it, this is even this is V, and it was K. I don't know what happened with these editors. I really don't know. So I was comparing dot chars dot nth zero returns an option with some Let's do some pattern matching. Okay. If this is it, I will do string from v dot chars v and I slice it and also do reference otherwise it says that even else I think I so basically what if I do this what is this problem now um, Found expected stir found string. So this slicing creates a stir dot to string again. Okay, finally. Okay, cool. 
So we got all of these. We still have a red squiggly in here. Why? Okay, where was we were correcting everything? Where is this? This is in, in, in headers, okay. So, what's this? Your eye. Oh. We were, we were even fixing the wrong place using supply. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, that wasn't the problem with sublime text, of course, but anyway. Okay, I think we're good. I can do cargo run. Oh, addressing use, because we are already, sorry, we are already using it in here. Um, oh, let's just use this in here. Run this. Run it. So we get something that is not okay. Response. So put this in here. So let's see why is that. So what, what we are doing is every time Okay, we also need to do another um, print of just an empty line. Run. Can I see the result? Can I see the exact thing it said since? So this and then this and mm, let's say if self not self response dot body dot len is not zero. why my response is not showing I don't know uh, I don't know why the response is not showing and I'm getting tired and it's one hour more than one hour so maybe we can just call this this off and leave to leave leave to fight another day I don't know I don't know what's the problem Let's see. Let's actually just print every line we print. So instead of this, I would do a print line. And not this. Of course not this. Not this. Same for here. This is not can we have print without line? Because this is how we should do print. Okay. I for one second I thought maybe this right all is Closing everything on the first um, on the first right all call. Let's just try this. Cargo run. Call this. Okay. So we definitely are seeing problems. 
this is not correct. This is not correct. Because our definition of this is correct, not correct. Run this again. No. Why we don't get okay the 200 and okay is okay is, is all right but why we don't get the version um in here don't we have the version in the request don't we have this in here we have that so for sure we have this in here so why it's returning an empty string? So self is a... Oh, we, we really didn't write anything. That's our fault. Yes. Cool. So we are writing the correct response. Is there any response headers? No. Let's add just one to see if it is actually working so let's actually do it in here and let's do it in here can we do dot put uh, let's do let response headers equals this uh, hash map of string to string response headers dot insert for example content length zero okay Response headers. Mute. Okay, let's run this one more. Run this, and we got the content length zero. Nice. Finally, we can try with the body. Finally, we can try with the body, and the body is going to be a string. Salam in Farsi means hello. Okay. Run. We didn't. Oh. <laughs> okay. Nice. Actually, it, the curve is, you know, thinking that our content length is wrong. Uh, I can just ignore this for now. And this works as well. So we have the um, HTTP protocol implementation completely, which is nice. This is also async, completely async. Um, we can we can try it uh, try to you know prove that it is async uh, in the next video. In the next video, we are going to prove that it is async, and also we are going to um, implement the radix trees and radix routing. And after that, we can have the path parameters. And finally, we should have the user-defined handlers. If we have user-defined handlers, we can imp simply implement middlewares, and that's it. So let me commit everything. So fix HTTP problems, response, function, and connection. Um, that is it for this video. If you like this content, please like, subscribe, uh, put comment if um, if anything is in your mind, and follow if you like more of this content. 
you can contact me in Twitter and GitHub using issues in tweet uh, in Twitter and GitHub using my email I think I have my email somewhere and in comments as well that is pretty much it and until the next video goodbye